Hello, MCU fans. Boy, the day has finally arrived. The Marvel Cinematic Universe official timeline book has been delivered, and I have been waiting for this thing for so long. In fact, I did a video in December of 2022, 10 months ago, where I discussed 20 questions it must answer. These are the things I want to see it answer for me to feel like it's a perfect success. So I thought, you know, for the first video on the book, because I plan to do a lot of them, I would go back and look to see, did it answer those 20 questions? So keeping in mind, there will be spoilers in this video for the book, but assuming that's okay, then let's dive right in and see what we can find out. Now, don't forget, we do have the October contest running all month long. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment. Five random winners will be announced on a video in early November and can choose between one of the books, including the timeline book, or these steel books. Best of luck. One other thing I want to mention right up front is I do have a video series, nine different videos, looking at the more, we'll call them controversial placements. You know, these are the placements that at least different you know, parts of the fandom debated on where they should go. You know, should it go in 2012 or 2013 or 2024 or 2025, et cetera. So if anything in this video piques your interest to wanna to know more about individual placements, then you can check out these videos. I won't be going into major um, details and such in this video or it'd be a really, really long video. So go check those out if you want more, just something to keep in mind. All right, so question number one. Will the Disney Plus timeline end up being accurate? I know a lot of people, you know, a lot of people, I might've been one of the few that actually thought it was gonna be accurate because a lot of people did not have much respect for it. And that's okay, by the way, that's fine. In fact, Screen Rant had a lot of articles where they were kind of hard on it. And I'm not trying to pick on Screen Rant. They have every right to do this if this is how they feel. And they said, getting the MCU timeline right shouldn't be this hard. Disney is wrong. Here's the real MCU timeline. And every time Disney Plus broke the MCU timeline. So Screen Rant was not the only one. Many people suspected that this timeline was terribly, terribly broken. Well, the good news for Disney Plus is it was 99.5% right. The only thing it got wrong was Shang-Chi should be before Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And in fact, if you log on to Disney Plus now, they fixed it. Isn't that funny? They, maybe they just tried to sneak it in hoping we wouldn't notice. Oh, oh, we notice. We notice all this. I've been looking at the, the, the Disney Plus timeline every morning, <laughs> waiting. And sure enough, the books come out and they fixed it. So that's a huge credit to Disney Plus. Yes, they got this one wrong, but they also fixed it. So I do think Disney, and Mar more importantly, Marvel, is trying to use this as a visual indicator of their timeline. Obviously, the timeline book goes into great depth, but yeah, this is a good visual. Keep that in mind as, as time goes forward. I think we can trust this thing. And if we do see something in error, hopefully they will fix it, right? Okay, number two, will the previous timelines be ignored? So there was a timeline that came out in uh, 2012, right around the time of the Avengers movie. Really, really cool. Love that thing. There was another one that came out for the 10-year anniversary. So the question is, will these timelines basically be you know, decanonized or ignored? If, like this one, I'm not sure if it ever was canon. Well, the answer is yes, they will be completely ignored. And I say that because, now th this is a, just one of the pages, there's several pages of this timeline, which is really busy, I know, but it's pretty cool. It lists everything happening in order, and you can follow a given hero by their line to see where they appear, pretty cool. But the bottom line is, this contradicts both the one from 2012 and uh, the one that came out at the 10 year anniversary. So yes, you can ignore both of those, Sadly, the one from 2012 was really, really cool, but nope, it's not canon. This is the official timeline. So yeah, this question was indeed answered. Number three, oh my, here we go, right? Are the pre-Disney Plus shows still canon? So we're talking, you know, the Netflix shows, the Defenders shows, I mean, which you would think they have to be, right? Daredevil is, uh, you know, showing up in, like in No Way Home and in She-Hulk. Surely, surely those are part of the main MCU. And then you got Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which crosses over multiple times with the MCU. I mean, granted, shows like Inhumans and Runaways, I could, I guess I could do without if those ended up being decanonized, but still, are they canon? Well, I don't know that the book 100% answers this question, but it sure feels like it's awfully close to answering it. Number one, none of these appear in the book. So that, there's that right off the bat. So that says something. Then we got some of these interesting quotes. So Feige in his foreword mentions 30 films, eight series, and four phases. Well, obviously there are more than eight series if you include the, the pre-Disney Plus shows. However, he does say 
at, in the, at the beginning of this sentence there, Marvel Studios produced. Okay, so this one's probably not a big deal. He's more just saying what is in the book, 30 films, eight series, four phases. So I think this one doesn't hurt anything. This one's a little rougher though. The timeline presented in the book is specific to MCU's sacred timeline through phase four. So basically, that seems to be saying, if it ain't in the book, it ain't part of the sacred timeline. Now, he does go on to say in the next sentence there, notice, but as we move forward and dive deeper into the multiverse saga, you never know when timelines may just crash or converge, hint, hint, spoiler alert. Okay, so he's not saying the shows aren't canon, but he does seem to imply they aren't part of the sacred timeline, that they're branches off the timeline. So, okay, there, there's that. And then there's this. He says, for now, this is the history of the MCU unraveled from end to end. Seems pretty clear. He's no longer saying like only the Marvel Studios produced stuff. He's saying this is it. This is it. Now, granted, some people have pointed out that there is one of the uh, one shots, a funny thing happened on the way to Thor's hammer. It doesn't seem to be mentioned at all. So, you know, I guess it's not everything if it missed one of the one shots, which you know is canon. So, you know, I guess until Feige just literally says the words, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is not canon to MCU's sacred timeline, then the door is not 100% closed. And honestly, I'm disappointed he didn't. I, I think at this point, he needs to be crystal clear. These, these quotes are pretty clear, but I would argue they're not crystal clear because <laughs> then we have Miss Minutes throws this in. She says, this isn't everything that happens in 616, much less the multiverse. Oof. So is she like poking at Feige in his own book? But I really think what she's saying here is there's obviously more because Phase 5 isn't in here. You know, there's been three entries in Phase 5, Guardians 3 and Secret Invasion and Quantumania. Uh, even Loki Season 2 isn't in here. So I really think that's what she was saying. But still, you see why this gets tricky. I mean, Feige's got to understand there are passionate, passionate fans about these pre-Disney Plus shows. And unless he specifically says something, it, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be debated. I will say, though, there are things like this Age of Ultron entry, where if you're an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. fan, you know it's Coulson that gave this to Fury, who then used it in Age of Ultron, but there's no mention of Coulson. None whatsoever. It just says that um, uh, Nick Fury and Maria Hill pilot a former S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier, but no indication of where they got it. So, I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments. Did this close the door on whether or not the pre-Disney Plus shows are part of the sacred timeline? They're still canon to the MCU, but are they part of the sacred timeline? I, I just wish, I wish it could be closed one way or the other. I'm not pushing for them to be canon or not to be canon. But I have to say, until it's crystal clear, I would call them still canon, bottom line. All right, kind of along the same line, are the MCU comic tie-ins still canon? Notice on the right, Fury's Big Week, my favorite comic tie-in, says Marvel Cinematic Universe, official tie-in. Can't get more official than that, right? But they're not in the book. No comments, no comics are mentioned. So I don't have anything new to add, but I'm just including these same you know, quotes just to say that probably applies to the comics as well. You either believe they're canon or you don't based on how you interpret these quotes. Ugh. So I'm gonna say they didn't really answer these questions 100%. But it's looking bleaker and bleaker for them being uh, sacred timeline canon. All right, I promise none are as difficult as those two. Uh, number five, will we learn who the MCU presidents are? One of the most interesting things about this, and I did a video, you can check it out if you want to know why. There's, there's way more to this question than you might imagine. But one of the interesting questions is Ellis and his presidency, if Iron Man 3 is in 2012, that means Ellis actually overlaps with Obama's presidency, creating a bit of a mess uh, you know, of who is president when. So that, that's a big question. But also, I want to know the presidents between Ellis um, and Ritson. Like, for example, was the president around the time of the blip, whoever was president in 2018, were they blipped? Did they have to pick a new president? Who was the president during the blip? These are questions I really, really want them to answer. And no, they don't answer. They're not in the book. Darn it. <laughs> Come on, Marvel, give us a list of the presidents, especially, especially during the blip. However, they do at least place Iron Man 3 in 2013, which we will touch on again a little bit later. And by doing that, they make it so Ellis' presidency doesn't necessarily overlap with Obama's. There are still some issues, and you can check out my Iron Man 3 video on that. But for the most part, this at least took care of that issue. But man, I want to know who was president during the blip, darn it. Give it to us, Marvel. Give it to us. All right, number six, how will the what-if timelines be handled? 
Uh, pretty well, pretty well, I think. I mean, I like this diagram showing the specific year when each of the episodes of the first season, you know, uh, branched off, if you will. You can see from the diagram, it sure looks like they're saying it's a branch. Uh, and that's cool. And it gives a year and some details, etc. And I do think they make it clear that What If is dealing with the multiverse, because they talk about each of these being universes, and it's the guardians of the multiverse. The issue I have, though, that they don't resolve in the book, dog on it, is in Loki, the sacred timeline branches and creates new timelines, not new universes. Yet here, after Loki, I'm assuming, right, the, the sacred timeline seems to be branching and creating new universes. So maybe just something fundamentally changed after Loki ended? I don't know. They, they really need to dot the I's and cross the T's on this and explain to us the branching during Loki and why that creates created timelines off the sacred timeline and the, I guess, branching during uh, the multiverse, during what if, and how a branch then created a new universe. Because I don't think, for example, 838 is a branch off of 616. 838's been around beforehand. So anyway, I'm going to say they half answered this and didn't really give us the full answer, but hopefully when what if season two comes out, we may get those answers. All right, question number seven, how will the Sony multiverse stories be handled? In other words, will the book cover Toby and Andrew's movies? Will it cover Venom's? Because of course he appeared in No Way Home. Morbius ties into the Venom verse. So is he covered? No. The answer is no. None of these movies are covered. That's a bummer. That might be some of what Miss Minutes was mentioning when she was talking about things that, you know, may get covered later. But I will give him credit for this, at least in the No Way Home entry, they do mention other versions of Peter Parker who were drawn into this universe along with their villains. So they clearly establish what I've wondered for a while, which is, are those uh, other Peters, Toby and Andrew, are they from a different universe or are they branches off the sacred timeline? Sounds like they've always been a separate universe, you know, as well as obviously the villains. So, okay, are they, I mean, they answered the question but then they didn't because they didn't talk about the movies themselves. And I really hope that in future editions of the timeline book that they will. It's going to be a pretty big timeline book at this point if they have to include all this. But nonetheless, it'd be very cool. Okay, what year did Iron Man occur in? This has been one of those big questions forever because we have 2008 there showing up on this screenshot in the actual movie. We have 2009 in this timeline that we've already said has been, you know, decanonized. Uh, we have 2010 showing up in Age of Ultron and referring to the first Iron Man movie. And then we have 2010 in the 10-year anniversary timeline, which again, was probably never canon, to be honest. Uh, but yes, they finally give us the answer. It's spring of 2008. And as I mentioned, I do have separate videos that go into some of these more controversial placements. And I have a full one on Iron Man and why 2008 does make sense. In fact, in particular, spring of 2008 for the ending of the movie. Okay, number nine. What year did Iron Man 3 occur in? You know, this was a question because in the movie they talk about 13 years from uh, the end of 1999, which would make you think December of 2012, but then there's a newspaper in December of 2013. Well, thank goodness the movie does resolve that it is in December of 2013. We get the answer, so it gets points for that, obviously for answering it. And then I did a video again on Iron Man 3, and it'll go into detail on why I, I really kind of like 2013. There's a lot of reasons this, this works really, really well. So you can check that out. This is a good question. How long of a time span was the first Doctor Strange movie? I really want the book to tell me that, because we see his watch looks like it's saying February 2nd, so in the beginning of the year, clearly. And then we know it ends at snowfall. So, I mean, that's a long time. That's, it, it, it may be one, may all be during the same year or may even overlap into the next year. So there's just been a lot of questions about the actual length of this movie. Well, they do a great job of explaining this. They tell us it starts in early 2016, and you can pretty much consider that January, to be honest, because there's the February 2nd date right there, which is from his watch. So the beginning scenes are in February, maybe January timeframe. Then we jump to Civil War, as you can see. Then we come back in the fall of 2016, and that's when he finally goes to Comertage. So, okay, I, I didn't guess that it had been that long of a gap, but okay, that's cool. So, uh, you know, most of the year has transpired, and then he heads to Comertage, and then the movie ends in 2017. Now, I wish they had said early 2017. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious because of the snowfall. It has to be January, February, maybe March, but probably, probably February. So, yeah, that means the movie spans 
about a year, which is pretty wild. I mean, most Marvel movies cover, what, one month, maybe two months? This one's a full year, so pretty wild. Um, so I would say they mostly answered this question. Again, I wish they had put early in front of 2017, but eh, good enough, good enough, I guess. Okay, number 11. Did Captain America travel to a branch timeline? Oh, this question. I swear, I, I really want the book to answer this. Because as you probably know, Marcus and McFeely, the writers of Endgame, they think he went back to live in the current timeline, like the, 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 the sacred timeline, which means there were two Captain Americas, which just boggles my mind. But the directors, uh, the Russos, say that he went to a branch timeline. I like that much better personally, but I know everybody has their own opinion. But yeah, please tell me the book will answer this. As well as, where did he get the shield to give to Sam? Right, because the shield was destroyed in Endgame. So where did he get this one? In fact, I'm really curious, because if you went back to live in the main sacred timeline, where did he get it? Like, there is no shield to give to Sam. And if he went to a branch timeline, where exactly did he get it? A little easier to explain it then, but certainly if he lived in the current timeline, the main timeline, where did he get the shield? Well, I'm sad to say, I don't think they answer either question. Because when they talk about him going back in time, it says, rather than return to his own time, he rejoins Peggy Carter in the distant past. Well, I mean, if you take that at face value, that's the distant past of the current timeline. And I, I just don't believe that happened. I just can't fathom that. But I wish they'd been really, really clear that that's what it was. You could argue that's clear, but I, I wish they'd been extremely clear. And especially because if he really did live in the, in the main sacred timeline, explain to me on the right where he got the shield. Unfortunately, they don't. They just say after Thanos is defeated by the Avengers, a now elderly Steve decides to pass his shield and its legacy it represents onto Sam Wilson. Well, where did he get the darn shield? So, oh man, they really, really need a special presentation where he returns all the stones, shows us where he lived with Peggy, and shows us where he got the shield. I was so hoping the book would address that. Oh, well, <laughs> it's not. The mystery lives on. Okay, number 12, when did Tiamat emerge from the Earth's core? This is one of those very hotly debated um, movie placements. And the answer is fall of 2024. So again, the Disney Plus timeline got this one right. I do realize that makes a mess out of Ajax five years ago line, uh, which anybody who's seen the movie knows what I mean. I did, again, do a video on this. You can go check that out uh, on why it doesn't work perfectly, but I do think there are good reasons this is in the fall of 2024. But, yep, yeah, there we go. At least it has been answered for good uh, by the book. Uh, does Number 13, does the Eid Festival timing trump when school starts? What I mean by that is the Eid Festival is featured in Miss Marvel, which uh, th this is the second Eid, so it would be in a June time frame. But then notice all these posters around the school. Fight the flu, car wash in September, get your homecoming tickets today. Really makes it seem like it's happening when school starts. Well, we get our answer. It's when school starts, <laughs> fall of 2025. And I, I like this much better. I think it makes more sense to be the beginning of, of school. And they're just basically wanting to include the Eid Festival, even though they don't have the right timing for it. Maybe something happened because of the blip. Maybe it's always been in the fall of a year like 2025. I did a separate video on it. You can go watch that for more details. But the most important thing is they answered the question. That's the key. All right, number 14, does a bus poster trump the Qingming Festival timing? Well, uh, and what I mean by that is notice it says July, which kind of implies, oh, it's happening in July. But as you can see from the right, when they go to Talo, it's during the Qingming Festival, which is clearly end of March, early April in uh, 2024, the year when this movie occurs. Well, remember, the Disney Plus timeline actually had it wrong. It had it more in the July time frame, but they flipped it because the book has officially put it in spring of 2024. And I am happy about that. That makes sense. The Qingming Festival is in spring. There's no reason this can't be in spring. I did do a separate video on it. Um, so you can check that out if you're interested because uh, there's some things about its timing with Falcon and the Winter Soldier that makes things interesting. But yeah, I think, I think this works. I'm glad they put it in spring of 2024. So yes, they did answer this question. Number 15, are the moon phases a reliable timeline indicator? Remember, the placement of Moon Knight was either based on the beginning of the exhibit date, which in the upper left-hand corner, you can see April 22nd, and then and that's important because that's when Stephen goes to say, hey, the exhibit's wrong, you don't have the right number of gods, or is it based in June, 
which seems to be a perfect moon placement for the episodes and the phases of the moon shown throughout the episodes. So this has been a hot debate. People either put it in 2024 or in 2025. Looks like spring of 2025. So, yep, it is It is not, they're not using that those moon phases. They're instead uh, using when the exhibit started in, in April. And again, video on this if you want more on it, but they did answer the question. That's great. We have an official placement. All right, this one's interesting. Number 16, how long after Wong's cage fight Remember that in Shang-Chi, we just were talking about Shang-Chi a minute ago. How long after Wong was cage fighting was the video released in She-Hulk? This has been a long, a long debated question. Now, for the record, I think there can be a gap because it was an illegal video at an illegal fight club that somebody probably just kept on their phone. But then when Abomination was about ready to get um, parole, somebody was like, oh, I can sell this to the press. So I think a gap is okay. But keeping in mind that Shang-Chi is in spring of 2024, they tell us officially the parole setback is in spring of 2025. So yes, there is a year gap between when the video was recorded, again, illegally, and when this episode took place. Pretty wild. But we kind of knew that. We knew that going in, there was going to be quite a gap. So, all right, that answers that. Yes, that perfect. Number 16 was indeed answered. Number 17, how long was Thor with the Guardians? Yeah, I know, Star-Lord. We are all trying to figure this one out. I mean, there are so many debates on when uh, basically Thor left the Guardian's side. Some people say 2024. Some people say early 2025. And the Disney Plus timeline said late 2025. Well, Disney Plus timeline, like I said, we just got all this stuff right. Because notice, fall of 2025, Thor parts ways with the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, yeah. Uh, basically, the movie is being placed in probably an October time frame. Uh, but more importantly, clearly fall of 2025. So, okay, they answered that question. Great. Number 18, when did Werewolf by Night occur and where? I kind of want to know where as much as when. So this is interesting. First of all, they went with the color pictures. So love it or hate it, because uh, I like the black and white myself, uh, they went with the colorized. Um, I was kind of surprised by that. But notice it's in fall of 2025, which is what the Disney Plus timeline showed, basically Halloween of 2025. But I love this, though. Look at Miss Minutes down there in the lower right-hand corner. These events seem to occur in 2025, but magical influences can make stuff like this hard to pin down. So what are you telling us, Miss Minutes? Just stop it. Stop it right now. <laughs> are, you, are you saying it's wrong? But no, I, I think she's just being a pain because uh, I do think they're saying it's in fall of 2025. They don't say, however, where. And what I mean by where is I could imagine them saying this didn't happen in the sacred timeline, that this is often a different universe if they want to start pulling some multiversal shenanigans as we move into Secret Wars. But I would guess it's part of the sacred timeline because that's what Feige said at the beginning. So I think they did answer the where question, um, and, and obviously they answered the when. So, okay, great. This one did get answered. Number 19, how long after Endgame did T'Challa pass away? This has been a debated question. Um, you know, was it a year later? Was it two years later? A year and a half later, etc. cetera. No, the book really lays this out well. Spring of 2024 is when he is laid to rest. And this, by the way, they do, they do canonize that it is after the Dora Milaje's appearance in Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which happens right around this time. Remember, they showed up to talk to Bucky. So that in the book is shown to be before this. So T'Challa passes away in spring of 2024, and the rest of the movie occurs in spring of 2025. So yeah, that works. They did answer this very well. And then question number 20 that I put on my list, I don't think there'll ever be an answer though to this one. Will fans agree with the timeline or will headcanon win? Yep, I don't know, right? I guess only time will tell whether or not the timeline book will be accepted. I love it. I think it's great. I've been one that kind of thought the Disney Plus timeline was right from the beginning. But, it, you know, I know for some people, some of these placements are indeed controversial. So I'll mention one last time. Go check out some of those other videos if you'd like more. But, yeah, let me know what you think. Do you think this book did enough? It didn't answer everything I would like, but it answered an awful lot. So personally, from my fast glance through it, I mean, I have several hours of pouring over it, but still, I'm going to read it front to back uh, next. But, yeah, I think it is a fantastic book. Highly recommend getting it. I think any big-time fan of the MCU will want their own copy or, or on Kindle. It's a lot cheaper on Kindle, and you can read it online. Anyway, let me know what you think. 
Also, don't forget, we have the October contest. Be a subscriber, leave a comment, and you may win one of these books or steel books. And of course, we have the Discord out there. Here we are discussing the timeline and the fact that some of these other timelines aren't, aren't valid anymore and how we're kind of bummed about it. We really did like that, that uh, original timeline that came out uh, around the time of Avengers. But anyway, I will leave a pinned comment so that you can join the Discord. We'd love to have you out there. Also, if you don't mind, like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. You can check out more content and we can all continue to enjoy the ever-changing, ever-growing Marvel Cinematic Universe.